Russell Goo. And here's a man, Jim, that has rushed for 614 yards so far this year on 119 carries and has three touchdowns. So we'll see a lot of him tonight. There's that interception all over again, Just tipped up in the air. Tip right there, and Lloyd was waiting for the ball. Call for a fair catch. Lloyd Curtis. All right. It'll be first and ten. A little Looks option like it pass. Could be an option. Oh, that's and interference. It downfield, incomplete. Corey Blake was who the pass was intended for, and the pass was thrown downfield. Well, if there is a replay here, and our, our crack crew usually has one, you'll see that the uh, defender runs right up the legs of the rolling receiver. Tony Saran is the man who threw the ball. Gio Amador is the tackle. Frank Hempelman is at one guard. Mark Hildebrand is the center. Tom Oliveris is at one guard. And Ryan McReynolds at the other tackle. Second down and ten. Ball at that 35-yard line. They flip it on an end around to Corey Blake. And he's got some running room. Corey Blake down to the 25-yard line of West Covina. Corey Blake, 5'9", 150-pound junior. Hit by Andy Guyton on that tackle. Here's a replay of it. He gets around the left side. So far, they're deciding left-handed, which is really odd because Ryan McReynolds plays the right tackle, and he's about as big as this press box. So that's going to be good enough for another first down for the West Covina 25-yard line. And Dave Hansen brings him out at quarterback, number eight. Hansen with an eye formation right behind him. Hansen fakes to the first man through, gives it to Russell Goo. And Goo picking up a block from Ryan McReynolds and Frank Hempelman gets down inside that 20-yard line. Let's see if they're going to spot the ball right at the 20. Let's just drop an O off of Goo's name. Russell Go. That's what he's doing, going. Jeff Gonzalez, Mike Villagran, and Marty Hernandez are the rolling receivers. The quarterback, Dave Hansen. The fullback is Tom Choi. And the tailback, Russ Goo. Second down at about five. This handoff straight up the middle goes all the way down to the 15-yard line. Good running by Tom Choi, the six-foot, 197-pound junior. Choi's keeping him honest, and so far the offensive scheme of rolling's keeping West Covina honest. They haven't hit the same hold on two consecutive plays. Robert Gian Gregorio. Is Gian the Gregorio. Is that how he pronounces Gian it? Gian Gregory in Italian. Oh, all right. Well, Gian I was, Gregorio. I was told Gian Gregorio. Well, the, these kids don't know how to pronounce their names these <laughs> is days. Is that what yeah. it is? Yeah. It takes a rafalo <laughs> to get the Italian pronunciation. No score, but it's third down and about a yard, and a pitch into the backfield. Russell Goo turns the corner, picks up the first down, goes down inside the 10-yard line to about the six, Jim. Good run by Russell Goo. Now that play should have stopped four yards earlier. You'll see on the replay, Goo makes the inside cut. He takes it wide and then reads the block right there, makes the inside cut, picks up an extra six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 yards. And finally brought down at that six-yard line. First and goal. Here we are back to action. Dave Hansen at quarterback. Play action. Pass wide open over the middle. Touchdown to Mike Villagran. is tight end. Number 32. But that didn't take long. Nine minutes and 25 seconds here into this first period. And they come up with a six-yard touchdown pass. There's the replay. Play action is what did it. Froze everybody, and Via Grand was open in the end zone. Mike Villagran, a little dark there. Underneath those goal posts, but he hung on to the ball. And Roland now will attempt that extra point. Mario Aguas is into the ball game. And he kicks it through the uprights. And quickly here in the first period with 9.25 remaining, it's 7 to nothing. Roland over West Covina will come right back right after this. At Byberg Field, the home field of West Covina, also Edgewood High in CIF competition. It is Sierra League action tonight. Well, we know Roland's good because it tied Los Altos last week, 10-10, and we saw Los Altos destroy La Mirada earlier this year. Well, you can say that right. All right, this kickoff is another end over end that's going to be a scramble for down at the midfield stripe, and let's see if West Covina has got it. And Roland comes up with the football. An onside kick is recovered by Roland, and the man that got it was Joey Flores. 
Uh, Pat Galvin was down at the bottom knocking people around, though. You'll see on the replay that it bounces off a lineman. Linemen are not supposed to be making those catches. Galvin gets in there, starts mixing it up, and one of his teammates comes up with the ball. Not only a 7-0 lead, but the ball. Well, it was Bill Flynn who had the ball bounce off his chest. That's first and 10 for Roland. Pass is complete down the middle. This is to Russell Goo. And he gets inside the 30-yard line down to the 26. Russell Goo, number 23. Well, West Covina is decidedly soft in that middle. They're going to take everything on the flanks. You'll see on the replay that the middle is wide open. Well, that Russell Goo can do it all, catch passes and run. And he's finally brought down by Sean Benson on that defensive unit for West Covina. Okay, back to the action now. First and 10, ball at the 26-yard line. They put Russell Goo in motion. Hanson hits Goo again at the 20. And is finally brought down at the 14-yard line. Russell Goo, who receiving this year, has got 151 yards, 614 yards on the ground. You know, it's impressive, and it shows up on this replay. We have seen a lot of good quarterbacks this year, but Hanson just stands in there. He does not worry about what's coming after him. He's getting plenty of protection. Goo gets free down, curls back in, takes the pass. Good downfield block from Jeff Gonzalez, and they're knocking on the door again. Andy Guyton in on that hit for West Covina. First and 10, the ball at the 14-yard line of the Spartans, and this handoff goes to Tom Choi. And the big fullback barrels his way down to about the two-yard line. Six-foot, 197-pound junior, and he just put his head down. Look from the end zone this time. Good camera work, guys. Choi is protecting the ball with both hands. Gets out in the open, shifts open. He's a strong kid. Andy Guyton finally brings him down. Number 85 on that defensive unit. Okay, it's first and goal now from the West Covina. Two-yard line. Dave Hansen calling signals, gives it to Choi, and he goes into the end zone. What a good block by Ryan McReynolds and Frank Hempelman. Hempelman made the kickout block. McReynolds just took his man one-on-one, -on -one, has the size to do it. No problem with McReynolds. He's 6'7", 245. You'll see in the replay, right on the line. He's still on his feet. Choi's still on his feet when he goes in. Strong young man. Somebody told me West Covino was favored in this, Chris. Well, they're 7-0 coming into the contest, rolling 5-2-1. I guess you would have to say that the Spartans would be the favorite. Aguas is into the game, kicks it through the uprights, but a penalty flag comes down on the field. The kick was good, but hold everything. Our officials here tonight, George Schillens, Jim Johnson, Ron Almond, and Lou Beechin. Preliminary, ind preliminary indication, there we see him on the screen. Referee, really kind of calling the shots for all of them tonight, George Schillens. Uh, looks like it was against Roland, so we're going to have to try this again. Preliminary indication might be holding against the Raiders from Roland. But right now, with 7.59 remaining in the first quarter, it's 13 to nothing. Roland leading West Covina. Remember, Sierra League action. And every time you're in league play, it's a big one. That's what it is, holding against the Raiders. So now we'll have your basic 25-yard uh, PAT kick. Yes, for an extra point. But they all count. The ball will actually be spotted at the 20-yard line. So it'll be a 40-yard PAT point after. Mario Agua, he didn't mind it. 40 yards or not, right through the uprights. And it's 14 to nothing here in the first quarter. As Roland jumps out to a two-touchdown lead over West Covina, 7.59 remaining in the first quarter. We'll come back right after this short timeout. Here it comes, the Winston Western 500, NASCAR's top of the line, November 16th and 17th at Riverside International. To nothing. Roland leading West Covina with 7.59 remaining here in this first quarter. I'm wondering if there's going to be another onside kick, Jim. Well, what's scary is Roland not only leads 14 nothing. West Covina's had the ball once. Once in the game. Hi, right, Corey Smith with the ball teed up. I don't mean one series. I mean <laughs> one snap. <laughs> at that 40-yard line. Leland Adams and Anthony Johnson haven't even seen the ball. They kick it on the ground again. And this one gets through to one of the up men at about the 27-yard line, and it's finally recovered by Sean Benson. 
I'll give you eight to five, Chris. I know one of the things they'll work on at halftime, the kicking game. They want to keep that ball away from Leland, Tom, uh, Leland uh, Adams, and the reason why he has run two kickoffs back for touchdowns this year and one punt return. Okay. Next week, a CIF doubleheader right here on Channel 56, Thursday night, modern day versus Servite. And that'll be at the San Ana Bowl. The game will be played on KDOC at 9 to 11 p.m. Actually, the replay on Friday, 2 to 4 in the afternoon. Oh, there's a big hole all the way up to the 35-yard line for West Covina. Now I see why they don't want to kick the Leland Adams. Leland Adams just squirted straight up the middle, and it was finally upended by Tony Serron. One of the top rushers in all of CIF, not just the league, not just the section, all CIF. 998 yards coming into the game. I think he's got his 1,000, Jim. Right there. All right. Second down and about a yard. He picked up nine on that last play, and the ball resting at the 35-yard line. Give it to Leland Adams again, and he is stacked up for a loss. Boy, Back to the 33-yard line at that point. Ryan McReynolds just grabbed a handful of anything wearing blue and brought it with him. You know, we talked about our CIF doubleheader next week, Modern Day Servite. That happens Thursday night. Then Friday night, here's a good matchup in the Inland Empire. Riverside, Polly, and Fontana. And, of course, we'll have our normal broadcast time, 10 p.m. Friday night, then 8 a.m. again on Saturday morning. So don't want to miss that doubleheader. Thursday night, Modern Day, and Servite. Friday night, Riverside, Polly, and Fontana. And a couple of great matchups right here on KDOC. CIF doubleheader. Third down. And about four. And Adams is the ball carrier. He gets up near that 35-yard line, and he is going to be stacked up by that center of the line on the defense well, not only of the, Roland. Not only the center line, Juan Castro came up from the secondary and just buried Adams on this play. Cast Castro is number 20. You'll see him just darting up from the secondary, lowers the head right here. Good play, good support. Six minutes and 13 seconds remaining in this first quarter. 14 to nothing. Roland leading West Covina. And West Covina has it first and 10. Ball in the center of the field at the 36-yard line. Quarterback Vince Aguilar. First play tonight was intercepted. Got his team a little bit on the move now. And this goes to Sean Benson. 5'8", 163-pound senior up the middle to about that 40-yard line and stacked up at that point. Mike Rutherford right there to grab him by the ankles. Ron Burdine also in on that hit defensively for Roland. There's that defensive line. Tim Gary, Frank Gillis, Ryan McReynolds. You can't miss McReynolds, number 78. I mean, he blots out the sun. Linebackers Ron Burdine, and we'll get to the rest of them in just a moment. It is now second down and seven. The ball at the 40-yard line of West Covina. Spartans with the ball. Aguilar drops back. He's got time. The southpaw throws it downfield. It is complete. Tootie Gill, 5'10", 170-pound senior, number 24, with that fine reception all the way down to the 37-yard line. It is first and 10, and that's in rolling territory. Great pass, Chris, because Aguilar had two people on him as he was throwing the ball. Corey Blake was the man who finally brought him down. In fact, Blake had pretty good coverage on him, but Gill just climbed the ladder, went up in the air, and grabbed the football. Leland Adams. He's a tricky little guy. Down to the 21-yard line. That quickness really was evident there as he just went outside and turned the corner. Got a, got a rolling player down. Ron Burdine was the man who was in on the tackle. And a rolling player is shaken up on the field with 444 remaining here in this first quarter. 14 to nothing. Roland leading West Covina. There's the shot of that offensive unit, but just in front of them, an injured player down on the field for Roland. Roland's across the way. Gold pants, white tops with those gold helmets. And Mike Anderson is down on the field with this report. Michael? Thanks, Chris. I have John Sweat, the uh, assistant vice pr principal here at West Covina, now in his ninth year. And John, you're also in charge of school operations, so you have a lot more responsibility uh, responsibilities than just a uh, vice principal. Well, generally, yes. Uh, we have 1,300 students, a little over 100 staff members, and in general term, my responsibility is to see that the school runs on a daily basis so that the 
teachers can teach and the students can learn and I take care of the light bulbs and the grass and make sure the water's running and pencils and papers are available and that type of thing. So it's just making sure that West Covina High School runs like it should Monday through Friday, really. All right, thank you very much, John. All right, my pleasure. Thank you very much, Mike. Chris, upstairs, you and Jim. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Tell John also, thank you so much for the hospitality extended by the West Covina Spartans here tonight. Frank Gillis was the man who was injured, but he was taken off the field. Hopefully he'll be okay. That handoff to Sean Benson, stacked up at that 24-yard line. Nick Colvin came in to replace Gillis. He didn't waste any time getting in on the play. It's right in the middle of the line. He's number 63 on the replay. Oh, this is the earlier run we're going to see. Leland Adams. Now you can see Adams. He has about five gears on this play. I mean, he, he shifts from one speed to another. He's tricky. Look at, look at him balance his weight. He puts it on his feet. So many kids try to put the weight on their hips. Not him. Benson and Adams in an eye formation, and the pitch goes back to Adams as he gets up near that 20-yard line. And he is upended by Ron Burdine, one of the linebackers. Burdine, 5'9", 162-pound junior. Good containment on Burdine on that play. He shut off the outside, forced him inside, and then made the tackle beside you see a shot of Vince Aguilar looking over at the bench to his head coach Tim Branshaw and see if he's going to signal a play out to him or send in somebody. And I guess they got it squared away with 3.22 remaining here in the first quarter. They trail 14 to nothing, but they have it third and 10. The ball at the 20-yard line in rolling territory. Aguilar. Throws one and is intercepted. His second interception of the night. Juan Castro returns the ball for Roland and is finally knocked off his feet what, at the 26-yard line. What great position on Castro. You'll see on the replay, Castro just slips inside of his man. There is great pressure on the rush there. That's what caused it. Greg Higuera made the pressure, and Juan Castro stepped inside for the interception. All right, Castro was brought down by Tootie Gill on that defense, or actually the offensive unit, the man that was running the wide receiver pattern, and Castro just stepped in front of him. First and 10 now for Roland, and they come up with their second interception of the night. They have the ball at their own 25-yard line. Russell Goo. Oh, he's really turning it on on the far side. Russell Goo all the way up to the 49-yard line of Roland. Well, they, they call it West Covina in an all-out rush that time. Not a blitz, but a straight rush. Pin your ears back and go after the guy. And he was just too quick for him. Goo was way too fast to the outside for those big linemen. Are you gambling sometimes, Jim, when you send everybody like that? You got a guy that's quick, can turn the corner on somebody? You, you're saying I have a lot of faith in my linebackers. That's what you're saying. <laughs> all right, first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Tom Choi. Fullback goes out of bounds. I think maybe a gain of a yard or so at the midfield stripe. It'll be second down and nine. We'll come back in a moment. 14 to nothing. Roland leading West Covina with two minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the first half. There's our score. Roland a two touchdown lead over West Covina. Two minutes and 16 seconds remaining here in this first quarter. Second down and nine from the 49 for Roland. Hanson with a completed pass down to the 46-yard line, and that went to Russell Goo. He can catch passes. He can run the ball. 5'9", 155-pound junior. The best thing is he'll be back again next hey, year. See on the replay, Gonzalez and Goo are running a crossing pattern. Goo goes behind, makes an excellent catch because the ball is just a little bit behind him. He's got a nice pair of hands to go with those wheels. Andy Guyton was the man who brought him down for West Covina. It'll be third down and five from the 45. Guyton, the leading tackler on that West Covina ball club, too, Jim. Andy Guyton. Third and five from the 45 of West Covina. Back to Russell Goo again. Goo breaks a couple of tackles and goes all the way down to the 34-yard line. Andy Guyton was the man who made the hit on him again. On the replay, Tom Oliveira, he's playing left guard. He pulls out and leads the convoy, makes a good block. Choi is out there pushing people around also. But it's Goo's speed, Goo's quickness, and Goo's ability to, to, to just go for anything he can get. Well, if Guyton doesn't get him, he's gone. If, if Guyton doesn't get Goo, he's gone. I love <laughs> the alliteration <laughs> astounds me here. G, G, and G, right? <laughs> All right it, we're not in Orange County, but we'll show you the top ten anyway. Servite, we'll see them, them Thursday night. And the doubleheader, El Medina won again last night, or pardon me, Thursday night. 
Mission Vale Capo Valley tied last week. Foothill Pacifica lost to El Dorado. Big upset. Newport Harbor, Valencia, Saddleback, and Marina. First and ten. We're gonna roll it. We're gonna see a good quarterback Thursday. Well, we'll see two actually, but the one I'm thinking of is on Servite. Name is Tim Rosencrantz. You will hear about him. We've seen nothing but good quarterbacks. This is another one. You know, a lot of teams are passing more nowadays, whether it's in the college ranks or in high school, mm -hmm. and that develops good quarterbacks. You can get more done passing. BYU proved that BYU has changed the face of football in America. Ball at that 34-yard line. They put Marty Hernandez in motion. What a great call. The motion went one way. Goo takes it up the middle as everybody's leaning toward the motion. Great angle blocking. Russell Goo down to the 22-yard line of West Covina. Hanson so far tonight. Dave Hanson, the quarterback on Roland. Four for four with 51 yards. Goo has three catches for 35 of them. That's been his favorite target. Leland Adams in on that last tackle. First and ten. Ball at that 21-yard line of West Cabina for Roland. Slot to the near side with an eye formation right behind Dave Hansen. And he gives it to Tom Choi, a big fullback, and he gets inside the 20 down to about the 19. Those were good yards. Gives, gives West Cabina defense something else to think about. Mike Rapeza in on the hit for West Cabina. 52 seconds remaining here in this first quarter. And it's 14 to nothing. Roland leading West Covina in Sierra League action in CIF. It's a good call. Not all plays are designed to go all the way, but all plays are designed to eventually score touchdowns. That sets up something else. Corey Blake, Jim, just checked into the ball game with a play from the bench of Harry Robinson on Roland, the head coach. Robinson in his fourth year as the head mentor of the Raiders. Second down and eight. Russell Goo, when in doubt, give it to Goo, right? And he goes down to the 15-yard line. Well, as Ro Rowan was decidedly left-handed earlier in the game, now they want to go the right side, pitching everything wide right and blocking down on the big guys. Now, here's the replay from the field level. Good, some more good camera work down there. The guys need combat pay on some of these shots. You can see Goo reads the block, cuts it back inside. And that is the end of the first quarter. 14 to nothing. Roland leading West Cabina, and we'll come back right after this short timeout. Field in West Cabina, as the West Cabina Spartans right now are trailing 14 to nothing to Roland. As we begin the second period of action in Sierra League conference play in CIF. What's impressive about the Roland 14 nothing lead is West Cabina's undefeated. Yeah, West Covina coming into the contest, 7-0. And, oh, and for Roland, 5-2-1. and one. Well, you know, maybe West Covina has been showing up for seven straight weeks and they've won all their ball games. You know, you've got to do more than just show up. And Tim Branshaw, probably one of the best coaches in the San Gabriel Valley in CIF, maybe from Southern California, knows that you to keep those guys pumped up week after week after week, and sometimes it gets tough. Third down and about four. Choi is the ball carrier. Number 44 down near that 15-yard line. Did he get inside of it? I think he did. Down to about the 14. And Tom Choi, number 44, helped up by his quarterback, number 8, Dave Anson. We'll see who Roland has beat this year, and more importantly, the two teams that beat it. I think Long Beach Jordan knocked them off, and Nogales knocked them off in league play. And then there was last week's 10-10 tie with Los Altos. And oh. if, if a tie can be impressive, that was it. You start tying Dwayne Despain's team over there at Los Altos and Hacienda Heights, you've done a job. Mario Agua stands up, tries to kick the ball for a field goal from that 20-yard line. A 30-yard field goal attempt, make it 31. And it is just no good. Wide and short. There's so the they'll turn the ball over now to West Covina. Here's the rolling record we were talking about only minutes ago. Sunny Hills. Sunny Hills have really come on lately. They're playing good ball. Upland, we saw them a couple weeks ago, and this rolling team beat them. San Gorgonio, this is very impressive because San Gorgonio beat Fontana this year. First and ten now for West Covina. They would love to put some points on the scoreboard. They trail 14 to nothing now. 
Adams the ball carrier. Vince Aguilar just spins around and hands it to Leland Adams. But boy, that hole was plugged up awfully quick. And Tim Geary looks like he was the man that stopped him right in the middle along with Ron Burdine. And Juan Castro continues to provide support from the secondary. That's a hard thing to do for a safety. All right, second down. Ball at that 21-yard line. A gain of a yard on that last play by Adams. And as they come up to the line, they have two receivers coming to the near side. Tootie Gill, along with Mike Colwell for West Covina. High formation right behind Vince Aguilar, Leland Adams, and Sean Bastian. They put a man in motion now. That's Tootie Gill. And they give it to Adams. And Adams is going to be stacked up. In fact, he goes down for a loss back near that 16-yard line. You want to see how to stop a student body sweep? Watch Ron Burden, 56. He came in, took on, you'll see on, it'll be on the right-hand side, he's number 56 in the white. He plays off the blockers, hand checks him, swims through, and keeps Adams from getting anything. And finally, the support comes up. That's how you play the sweep. That's how you do it, right there. Good play by Burdeen. Ron Burdeen, number Mike, 56. And Mike Rutherford comes up after Burdeen holds it up. Great play by the linebacker. All right, third down and 15 after that last loss of yardage, about six now. High formation. Dropping back in a draw play. Guess who? Leland Adams. And he's picking up some running yardage. I think he's going to be very close to a first down, depending on where they put it. Bad time for rolling the blitz that time, wasn't it, Chris? Yes, it is. Good enough for a first down, too, because Leland Adams took it straight up the middle. First and 10 at the 31-yard line. And let's go down to Mike Anderson on the field. Michael? Chris, the, the feeling down here on the West Covina sideline is kind of a feeling of uh, disbelief. Uh, the two touchdowns in the first quarter by Roland, it's the first time all year that West Covina's given up two scores in the first quarter, and being down 14 to nothing has really caught him off stride. Tony Serrano on that last hit as Wes Covina has it first and 10 from the 31-yard line. Might have picked up about two to three yards on that handoff. There's a shot of the West Covina Spartans on the sideline. And the good news is Frank Gillis came back in for Roland. He was the Mike man that was hurt earlier. He's back in there now right in the middle on defense. Workhorse Leland Adams tackled by Mike Rutherford on that defense. There they are, Roland's defensive unit. Second down. And eight. West Covina with the ball at that 33-yard line. Vince Aguilar with a pitch to Adams. Throws it complete to Tootie Gill. And that's up to the 45-yard line. Might be out of bounds on the far side of the field at the 47. So an option pass from Leland Adams to Tootie Gill. And he's knocked out of bounds by Corey Blake. Great pass by Adams, as you can see on the replay. If he ever needs a crash quarterback, Adams may be it. Say, both coaches are going to every page in the playbook tonight, aren't they? They're not leaving anything out. Got an interesting stat for you. Leland Adams has thrown five passes, make it six now this year. But before the game, he was five for five, all of them touchdowns. Now, that was a completion, but not a touchdown. Ruined his average. So he is uh, six for six, but five touchdowns. This handoff to Adams up near that 49-yard line. Uh, Pat McAnally, the Cincinnati Bengals punter who played for Villa Park, he had a similar record for a while, but lost it up this year. All right, Chalk Talk this week with Nolan Cromwell and Gary Green. And remember, you can see it Saturdays right here at 11.30 a.m. and 9 p.m. Chalk Talk right here on KDOC Channel 56. All right, we'll be back in a moment with 8.03 remaining in the first half. 14 to nothing, rolling, leading West Covina. Spartans with the ball, and Aguilar drops back and throws one complete to Tootie Gill. He gets down to the 45 in rolling territory. And Dietz Mitchell throwing a nice pick out there, which is supposed to be illegal. Juan Castro <laughs> in on the hit. You're right about that. You can't do that. Somebody catches you, you get an automatic penalty flag in the air. There's a legal way of doing it, and, and Dietz managed to pull it off, as you see on the replay. If you're standing still, which he does here, it's, it's like a screen in basketball. The minute he starts moving, it would have been illegal. Third down and about two from the 45 of Roland. West Cabina with the ball, slot to the near side. Tootie Gill lines up in the slot. Outside of him is Mike Caldwell. High formation. They pitch it back to Leland Adams. Oh, oh boy, buried. that Roland 
defense is keying on Adams, aren't they, Jim? Boy, just very. I mean, the minute he got the ball, it was like a magnet. It threw everything there. You'll see on the replay, he goes to one spot, and there are four rolling defenders waiting for him. I mean, talk about beating the line, which, which is exactly what happened there. Mike Villagran led the charge for Roland and threw him back to the 49-yard line. All right, special Thursday night edition of our CIF doubleheader. There's the first half, Modern Day and Servite. And we'll play it back on KDOC 9 p.m. Thursday night, then again on Friday. Modern Day got past Pius 10 Thursday night, 16 to 6. Punting situation for West Covina. And Mike Colwell gets this one away. They're going to let it roll. Tony Saran watches it go out of bounds. That's going to work out as a fine kick down around that five-yard line. Well, that's a beautiful kick done by Mike Colwell on West Covina. That backs up Roland. 43-yard punt. And then on Friday night, the second half of our doubleheader, Riverside Poly and Fontana. There's some Inland Empire action. You won't find anything better than that. And we'll have that game Friday night at 10 p.m., then again Saturday at 8 a.m. in the morning, like we usually do on our Friday night games. Servite has a tough one this week. Bishop Amat, both <laughs> teams undefeated. We don't know how that has come out yet. Well, that's going on right now, right, at least right down during the street. our broadcast. Yes. Joy. Joy. Pretty tough there, Chris. Yes, all the way up to the 16-yard line. Tom Choi. And he is a load to bring down in high school. Six-foot, 197-pound junior. The Choi and Goo, they complement each other. Here, here's the big five rankings. Long Beach Poly, Bishop Mott, which plays number three Servite tonight. Riverside Poly, four, Fontana, five. We'll see that next week. Uh, modern day is coming along. They're moving on. They had a lot of replacements to make last year. I tell you, Chuck Gallo will have that team ready next week for Servite. Len Norris in on that last tackle for West Covina. Russell Goo. Up near the 23-yard line. Roland leading 14 to nothing with 5.37 remaining here in the first half from Thyberg Field in West Covina, Sierra League action. Roland keeps taking everything wide. You're going to see a very tired West Covina defense by the end of the game, Chris. All right, it'll be, it'll be second down and five as Roland comes up to the ball. Corey Blake wide to the near side. Just went out of your picture. I formation. Dave Hansen. Now the backs are split. They give it to Choi. And he kind of barrels his way up near that 27-yard line where he's hit there. You know, see the premiere of Turning Point with special guest Milton Burrow this Sunday night, 11 p.m. on KDOC Channel 56. On the replay, Chris, Choi protecting that ball, keeping the legs moving. He's a good little running back. Of course, he's not so little if you're trying to tackle him. <laughs> not at six foot, almost 200 pounds. In high school, that is a load. Mike Heredia in on that last hit for West Covina. 4.57 and counting, remaining in the first half. Rolling with the ball, first and 10. And the handoff to Choi, and just as soon as he gave it to him, the quarterback, Hanson, Choi was popped. And a loss back to the 24-yard line. Let's watch it again. They see on the replay, Tom Lazalette is right there with the ball. Looked like a little timing problem. Quarterback and running back ran into each other. So it'll be second and 12 on that two-yard loss. Good defense by Lazalette. Roland, Dave Hansen, number eight. Running backs, Goo and Choi. And Hansen wants to put it up and bounces the ball in front of his intended receiver. That's Jeff Gonzalez. Just didn't quite get it to him back there defending was Mike Colwell. Jeff Gonzalez lining up as a tight end, 5'11", 178-pound senior. That's the first incomplete tonight for Dave Hansen. How about that? Well, it was incomplete because West Covina got a good rush that time and was in before the linemen were set. All right, it'll be third down and 12 at the 25-yard line. Jeff Gonzalez now flanks out to the near side. To the far side is Tony Saran. The backs are split behind Dave Hansen. Hansen wants to Inside put it up. Inside handoff. Yeah, almost like a Statue of Liberty. <laughs> it's still going back. here. Russell Goo. Yeah. 
Looks that was like, to the 27-yard line. Look like the Vikings, Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> Bud Grant loves running that series. And let's go down on the field to Mike Anderson, Michael. Thanks, Chris. I have Dr. Thomas Aney, now in his 22nd year here at Roland High School. Matter of fact, he opened the school. And, Doctor, the thing you got to be proud about, Roland's one of the best schools anywhere in the nation academically. Matter of fact, the state of California awarded you $140,000 in, in a program called Cash for Cap. What exactly was that? Well, the uh, cash for CAP, the CAP stands for the California Assessment Program. Every senior in a public high school up and down the state of California is given the same matrix of tests, and the school is measured on how well they do on this proficiency exam. Uh, Roland High School was measured to be the very best in the state of California, and we won $140,818 for that effort. That's unbelievable. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Chris, back upstairs. Mike Villagran with a 30-yard punt that Leland Adams almost made a mistake with. I almost picked it up. 140 grand, you know, Elder doesn't make that much. Well, he's close, though. He's very close, yes. Three minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Of course, Bobby Elder, sports director here at KDOC Channel 56, and our producer on location back in the truck with our director, Brian. Brian Lockwood. Brian Lockwood, of course. All right, pass intended, downfield for Tootie Gill, and he was nailed by Lloyd Curtis. Got a replay. It might be that there was footsteps being heard, but they were very large footsteps. They were Lloyd Curtis's feet pounding through the turf, and he puts the hit on for good measure. If you're going to get hit, you might as well catch the ball. <laughs> now that is easier said than done, too. <laughs> well, West Covina, that's tell their colors are powder blue. Look a little like La Harbra. Yeah, they do as a matter of mm -hmm. fact, don't they? Remember the last time we were out here in the San Gabriel Valley, you called this North Orange County. Isn't it? <laughs> here we go again. Second and 10. 35-yard line of West Covina. Vince Aguilar with a completed pass, and this one goes to Leland Adams, and he gets up near the 44-yard line. You know, Monday through Friday nights at 10 p.m. to midnight on Channel 56. It's exciting sports action. Well, we got some exciting action out there because Vince Aguilar took a shot on that pass. and He's, a, he's out there reeling and rocking. I don't know if he's going to play right now. Remember, it's Sports Block, 10 p.m., right here on Channel 56. See on the replay, after Aguilar lets go of the ball, watch the hit from the ball. You, you couldn't see it because they were following the ball, but take my word for it, he was nailed. Lloyd Curtis... In on that pop. That's good enough for a first down. 44-yard line. Didn't mean to interrupt the commercial with game action. <laughs> How foolish of us. Squeeze him in there. Aguilar, good looking pass, complete. Mike Caldwell down to the 40-yard line, rolling territory. Apparently nothing wrong with Aguilar because he threw that slant perfect. All right, with 2.30 remaining in the first half, 14 to nothing. Roland leading West Covina. We'll be back right after this short timeout. and counting remaining here in the first half 14 to nothing Roland leading West Covina West Covina has it first and 10 pass by Aguilar intended for Leland Adams out in the flat and it looked like Aguilar got popped just as he tried to let loose of the ball and he, it went he, over the head of Adams he did that was Tim Geary that was there nailing I mean, pushing on the knee I mean it's clean and everything but it's sure hard to throw a decent pass that way pretty good sized guy too 262 218 pound senior and pretty good quickness also all right, it'll be second and 10 from the 40-yard line of Roland. West Covina with the ball. Mike Caldwell comes out to the near side. To the far side is Tootie Gill. I formation, Leland Adams and Sean Benson behind Vince Aguilar. Quick little look in over the middle. What a Keith catch. Mitchell complete the tight end down to the 30-yard line. Now they're going to spot it at the 29. On the replay, you see a one-handed catch. I mean, he looks like a shortstop fielding a chopper. He takes it in. A great catch, and it was in traffic, no less. Let him reach down for that with one hand. What a great catch. Juan Castro was the man who made it. John Patterson on camera getting a great shot, too. Thank you, Johnny. That's good enough for a first down at that 30-yard line of Roland for West Covina. They shift Sean Benson from a fullback, lining him up as a halfback, then give him the inside handoff. That didn't fool anybody. Stacked right up at the 31-yard line. It fooled least of all Mike Rutherford. You know, you can see the show that's shaken up Southern California. It's Hot Seat with the one and only Wally George. Saturday nights at 11 p.m. on KDOC-TV. 
right here on Channel 56, the hot seat. Timeout down on the field with 1.36 remaining here in the first half. And they're going to talk things over as we take a look at... Uh, why does everybody say hi, Mom? One of the young ladies along the sideline. She's not crying. That's glitter. She's wearing a... I saw you checking it out before the telecast. <laughs> I know you're absolutely right. Just digging for gold is all doing. That's it. West Covina right in front of us in their powder blue uniforms. Tim Bradshaw out there with his coaching staff talking with the quarterback, Vince Aguilar. Totally trying to figure out what they can do with a minute and 36 remaining in the first half. Across the way, Roland. You told me the Spartans were playing the Raiders. I thought I was going to say Villa Park Sonora tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You've got that orange. You know, this is my territory now. We're in the San Gabriel Valley where I grew up. Very nice Orange County. Here. Very hospitable people out here, <laughs> I might add. Yeah, we really like it. You know, special Thursday night edition, the first half of our CIF doubleheader, Modern Day and Servite. That happens Thursday night. We'll replay it back at 9 p.m. Then again on Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock. And then on Friday night, Riverside, Polly, and Fontana. Two Super Bowl games. Friday night at 10 o'clock as usual. Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, CIF doubleheader right here on Channel 56. We get paid twice for that, do we? We get paid for both games? I think that they're going to work something out like that. You've got a bonus clause in your contract. Another inside that tight end. Deets there. Mitchell. Working that middle very well. Vince Aguilar to Deets Mitchell, and he's upended by Tony Saran. Well, all the quick stuff. That's what they've gone to on this series, and it's worked very well. Right over the middle, that quick little short pass from Vince Aguilar. And Dietz Mitchell, number 15, with another big catch. And West Cabina's moving that ball down to the 18-yard line of Roland. 126 remaining in the first half. They trail 14 to nothing. Aguilar on the far side. That is complete to Tootie Gill. And he goes out of bounds at about the 11. With 119 remaining in the first half. 14 to nothing. Roland over West Covina. We'll be back. We got four for West Covina. They're down at the 11-yard line. I, I suspect this is the real West Covina team we're seeing here. I think you might be right, Jim. Great tradition here at West Covina. Head coach Tim Bradshaw, before him, Mal Eaton. All the Long way. pass into the end zone, and complete over the head of Mike Caldwell. And back there defending Lloyd Curtis. And a minute and 15 remaining. I think Aguilar had to throw it just a little soon because Juan Castro was blitzing in. You know, Mike Caldwell, number 11, who was going for that pass, he makes a good target. 6'3", 175 pounders, so he's long and lean, but a great target for a quarterback to throw to him. Vince Aguilar already hit him tonight for a couple of passes. That one a little bit over his head. It's third and four. Here's a big third down play. Third and four from the Roland 11. All third downs are big. <laughs> they really are when you think about it. Eye formation. Aguilar hit as he threw the ball. It is complete, though. Tootie Gill. And Gill struggles all the way down to the one-yard line. I think he's got a first down, first and goal at the one. And, and, and how, how Aguilar throws this, because Castro is wearing, he, he's right on his legs on that play. And yet somehow Aguilar got the pass off, and Tootie does not give up. He just kept struggling. Ron Burdine was the man who finally made the tackle on it. Yeah, and they're going to put it at the two-yard line. There well, you see our time and our uh, score. Roland is the visitor tonight. West Covina, the home ball club. Love these names, Tootie and Deets. I love them. Great. That's what happens when you come to the San Gabriel Valley. Timeout on the field is going to be called. And with 107 remaining here in the first half, West Covina threatening to score. They trail right now 14 to nothing to the Roland Raiders. They're not threatening, they're promising. And you just saw, maybe you saw him go out into the huddle of the West Covina Ball Club. The head coach, Tim Branshaw, who's been here for 16 years. I suspect he's telling him that, uh, okay, here's the play we're going to score on. If that doesn't work, here's the play we're going to score on. If that doesn't work, here's the play we're going to score on. In other words, he's going to give him three plays to run in this minute seven. You like that rule where the coach can go right out on the field and get with the guys, don't you? You know, you know why I like it? Because this is high school football. It's allegedly a class. Now, you have a game situation Now, wait here. a minute. Wait a minute. What do you mean allegedly? Well, in college, we know darn well it's not a class. It's work experience. But here, 
the coach goes out there and he's instructing these kids. He said, here is, here's Howard, here's what I teach you. Here's a Bradshaw quote here. I feel real good about being undefeated. Well, of course you do. That was not hardly a Shakespearean quote, but he continues. There's Tim. Yeah, like they said that's the win and so do we. Well, that makes sense. Like we said, 16 years. The head coach here before him, one of the legends of the San Gabriel Valley, Mal Eaton, who's now the head coach at Mount, Mount San. San Antonio. First and goal from the two-yard line. Fumble, fumble, and Roland has it. Oh, what a tough break for West Covina. Looked like Burden finally came up with it, but the referee, yes, yeah, that's it. Roland's ball. What a bad break. And I think Burden was the one... It, from the end zone, you'll see that the quarterback has trouble handling the snap. The rolling kids are the only ones that see the ball on the ground. They're facing it. Burden reaches down, hauls it in. Roland's ball with 102 left. All it has to do now is take care of it, and you go in the locker room, 14 up, zip. Nice lead. Ron Burdine. Now, his name looks like it's pronounced Burden, but it's Burdine, B-E-R-D-I-N. Uh, he's been a burden on West Covina tonight. <laughs> Defensively, you're absolutely right. 50 seconds remaining here in this first half, and West Covina trailing 14 to nothing. And Roland. Uh, the ball, and they give that one to Choi. What a shock. You give it to your fullback when you're trying to trying to waste time. And he's a six-foot, 197-pounder. And he also handles the ball with both hands, keeps both arms wrapped around. He is not going to fumble this ball. We'll have one more play and go in the locker room. Gio Amador in on that last hit for West Covina. 19 seconds remaining in the first half. Now the quarterback should just keep this one. Don't even hand this one off, Dave. Dave Hansen, number eight at QB. Quarterback keeper, goes straight up the middle. That will be the last play of the first half. Five seconds. Very impressive half by Roland, and not just the tricky stuff at the start, but they're playing them equal in the pits. Yep, you better believe it. Nine-yard touchdown pass from Dave Hansen to his wide receiver. And also a nine-yard run, and it's 14 to nothing. Roland leading West Covina here at halftime. This Just before the beginning of the second half, 14 to nothing. Roland leading West Covina, and Mike Anderson down on the field with Jeff Gonzalez. Mike. Thanks, Chris. I have our Achievement of Excellence Award winners with me, and from uh, Roland is Jeff Gonzalez. Jeff not only plays football, as you can see right here, he also plays baseball, and Jeff carries a 3.42. Jeff, what's your plans now for next year? Well, I plan to go to UCLA or UCI and uh, major in pre-med, and um, plan to carry on the athletics, because that's what I'm best at right now. Well, Jeff, I know you've got to get back on the field, so I'll give you your plaque. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Here we go, Jeff. And good luck, Jeff. Thank you. And on my right, I have Elizabeth Ann Keenpour. She's a perfect 4.0, probably the valedictorian for here from West Covina. Elizabeth, what's your, your goals for next year? Um, I hope to possibly go to UCLA or UC Irvine and continue studying languages. What type of languages do you want to basically major in? Uh, French, Spanish, well, as many as I can possibly handle at once, I hope. All right, good luck, Elizabeth Ann. Thank you. And here's your award. Thank you. Okay, and we'll be right back right after this. Hi, Jim Lazar, Dodson. Well, the second half, just about ready to get underway. Glenn Norris with that ball for West Covina at the 40-yard line. Back deep, Russell Gu, Tony Saran, and Eric Lukowski. Back for Roland as they lead 14 to nothing over the Spartans of West Covina. West Co, of course, scoreless here in the first half. Onside kick is going to be recovered by Roland. Right. And it's done so by Ron Burdine. I win the halftime bet, right, Chris? <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. I said, you watch West Covina come out here and try the same thing. I owe you an in and out hamburger. I, I accept. All I right, love what, those things. Double-double or what? Hey, here's our first half stats, and as you can see, the Roland folks are outrushing <laughs> the West Covina people, and that's that's impressive. Turnovers, too. We saw both of them. One uh, gave Roland a touchdown, the other one prevented West Covina from what would have had to have been a score. Choi, the ball carrier, the pullback up to the 46-yard line. 
after a first and 10 from the 40 or checked at the 39. What, guard and Tom gonna... I'm sorry, because guard Tom Oliveris and Rowan, somebody at halftime has said, I want you to go out there and bury your man. And that's what he did because he was doing it 10 yards past the play. All right, second down, call it four. Ball right at the 45-yard line of Roland. Dave Hansen brings him out at quarterback. He was four for five for 51 yards, and they pitched this one back. Corey Blake, and he goes out of bounds right in front of his own bench at about the midfield stripe, depending on where they spot it. All right, let's go back and take a look at that first touchdown pass of the night. And it's in slow motion for those of you who don't read quickly. Dave Hansen. Dave Hansen standing in there, by the way. Right over the middle, wide open to Mike Villagran. That was a play action that caused it. All right, first and 10 now as we get back to action. Ball at that 49-yard line of West Covina. Roland Hansen complete. And Hansen hits Jeff Gonzalez. All right, let's take a look at the second touchdown now, Jim. That's uh, Choi just powers his way past and through people, gets some good blocks on the right-hand side from, from McReynolds and Hippelman, and he powered it in there. And that's been the extent of the scoring all in the first half, 14 to nothing, Roland leading West Covina, who is held scoreless. But West Covina had the ball at the Roland one, only to fumble. All right, second down, call it five. Ball at that 44-yard line. Choi, the ball carrier, down to about the 43. Might have gained a yard or two, depending on where they spot it. Sean Benson was the man who made the tackle for West Covina. 10-16 and counting, remaining here in the third period in our CIF Game of the Week on Channel 56. You know how bad it's going for West Covina so far, Chris? At halftime, when they had the 50-50 drawing, somebody from Roland won the money. It's a true story. I remember that, too, and you wanted to see if you could pass the money to him from the lady who was holding it. Either me or the IRS. <laughs> All right, they put a man in motion. Going to the far side. Handoff goes to Russell Goo, and Goo gets down to the 35-yard line. Russell Goo picks up a first down to the West Covina 35. Goo's not the largest man in the world, but he is sure quick, and he gets through before the defense has time to turn around and make the block. You're facing the line of scrimmage. By the time you turn, Goo is by you. Tom LaSolette was the man who made the hit. All right, don't forget our CIF doubleheader starts on Thursday night with Modern Day against Servite. That's the Holy War. And we'll have that broadcast back to you at 9 p.m. Then again on Friday, the second half on Friday night. That's going to be a dandy one, too. Riverside Poly and Fontana right here on KDOC Channel 56. Choi, and he might go all the way. No, brought down. But Choi is not a track man, but he picked two spots that time, and that's why he got it. His first play was he read where the defense was. The second one, he read where the secondary was. Tom Choi, 6'197 pound junior. Looked like he had a step on that defense and was brought down from behind. On replay, you watch the first move. He's reading the line. It's designed to go outside, but he cuts it back in through the tackle. Now he sees that the pressure is on the outside, so he cuts it inside 25 yards and almost a touchdown. And who got him but Leland Adams. And here comes Choi to the near side, and he is submarine tackled down at the nine. Good hit put on him by Sean Benson on that defensive unit. And Robert John Gregorio was in on that also. Made a nice pop there. We'll just call him John Gregory so he won't quibble about pronunciation. Mark Heredia also in on that hit. With 8.33 remaining here in the third period, Roland threatening to score once again. They have it second down. And goal. Ball resting on that eight-yard line. Oh, what Over a the middle, touchdown, Jeff Gonzalez from Dave Hansen. Hansen fakes to Choi, freezes the linebacker, fires it, and Gonzalez makes the diving catch you'll see on the replay. Here's the fake to freeze the linebackers. A slant in, a nice catch, looks the ball in all the way, perfect play. That's how you diagram them. Had a step on in the inside on Andy Guyton, and there you see the visiting crowd here tonight from Roland, and it's now 20 to nothing in the third quarter. A defensive back cannot defend that play. That is not designed, it's supposed to be a linebacker. 
Mario Aguas into the ball game, kicks it through, and with 8.15 remaining here in the third period, it is 21 to nothing. Roland leading West Covina by three touchdowns right now. Let's watch it again. Yeah, as you see, the fake does freeze the linebacker. The linebacker did what he was supposed to do. Now, a defensive back cannot get inside on that. Absolutely no way of doing it. Well, it's 21 to nothing right now. Uh, and Roland leading West Covina in Sierra League action. And this is a big ball game for Roland. We'll come back in a moment with 8.15 remaining here in this third quarter. 8.15 remaining here in this third period with Roland in the driver's seat. And the ball at that 40-yard line. Corey Smith has it teed up back deep. And he hasn't seen the ball yet. Leland Adams and Anthony Johnson. Let's see if they try an onside kick once again. Eight plays, 62 yards, capped off with an eight-yard touchdown pass. For Roland. And that is going to be recovered and picked up at about the 25 and returned to the 28-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 from that 28-yard line. And West Covina will have the ball. Harry Robinson, the head coach on Roland in his fourth year. What did he say, Chris? Well, let's find out. The quote is, actually, he didn't say anything. He mimed it. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. I think the key for us will be containing their speed, which is what they've done. That's why they're kicking off the way they do. There's Robinson right to the left of the screen. Oh, and off up the middle to Leland Adams. Leland struggling up to about the 25-yard line. You know, make that the 30 and upended at that point. Juan Castro is not making very many tackles, but he's sure in a lot of plays. We'll continue the quote. We've got to win it to get in the playoffs, obviously. We think we can finish second by winning the next two games. Well, so far, Roland has a darn good start on doing just that. They lead 21 to nothing with 7.26 remaining here in this third period. Tim Geary in on that last hit for Roland. West Covina now has it second down and nine from their own 30. Aguilar. Puts it in the air complete to Tony Gill. Actually, it's Tootie Gill at about that 29-yard uh, line, or check that, the 34. And let's watch it one more time. Nothing spectacular about it, but that's how you win games, by doing the mundane and doing it properly. Wear down the other team. Corey Blake in on the tackle, number 28. There's a shot down that sideline. West Covina coaching staff. And there's the head coach. You saw him walking right toward us as we took a shot back onto the field. Tim Branshaw on West Covina. His offense on the field. Try Completed to get lateral to Leland Adams. And Adams goes out of bounds. That's one way of getting him outside, Chris. See on the replay, you've got again Castro blitzing there. It leaves the flat open. They get it out there to Adams, and he just turns on the speed. Now, he can outrun linebackers. He can outrun Deer if he has to. 43-yard line. Leland Adams, number 17. What a ball player he is. He can do it all. But he has been limited tonight by the rolling defense. First and 10 at the West Covina 43-yard line. Vince Aguilar to Adams. Adams trying to get to the outside, reverses his field, and now he's going way back for a loss. Yeah, he lost back yards. to the 36-yard line. He lost yards, but he ran about 40 yards. You'll see on the replay, this is probably the most exciting play of the game. He breaks a couple of tackles. This is a sign of a good player. Okay, on the stat sheet, he's going to lose yards, but he's out there trying. He's playing a very good game. And Tim Geary finally gets him and brings him down to the turf. Ball at that 36-yard line of West Covina. It'll be second down and 17. I talk about pursuit rolling defense that time, huh, Chris? Mike Colwell, you got it too, Jim. To the far side, Tootie Gill to the near side. Running backs, Benson and Adams. Aguilar. Throws it incomplete. Pass intended for Leland Adams, number 17 at the 45-yard line. Yep. And he kind of looks a little dejected. He wanted to grab that one and turn it upfield. Now, Tim Geary, Tim Geary on the pressure. That's why that, that pass was incomplete. Geary came there for long before he could do it. You know, Chalk Talk 85 this week with Nolan Cromwell and Gary Green. You can watch it Saturdays right here at 11.30 a.m. tomorrow morning and at 9 p.m. tomorrow night. Chalk Talk. I think you'll like it. Now, if you're watching Saturday, it's not tomorrow. It's 
Saturday. That's right. And of course, this game, of course, we're telecasting it on a late Friday night, early Saturday morning, whichever the case may be. And a penalty flag comes down as that pass was intended for Dietz Mitchell. Now, they may be at calling... At the 45. If they're calling interference, it's a bad call. If they're calling holding, it's a good call. And I'll tell you why it's a bad call on interference. Now, see, it's holding that they're calling. That's the good call. Aguilar looking over the middle. Now, somebody say, well, now they interfered with the right to catch. No, the minute the ball is tipped, you can do anything you want to the receiver. Meanwhile, West Covina was holding, keeping the rush from coming in. I think Greg Higuera might have got a hand on it, but offsetting penalties against both ball clubs, and it will be nullified. Let's go down to Mike Anderson for this interview mm -hmm. on the field. Mike? Thanks a lot, Chris. I have with me Phil Urabi, who happens to be the ASB director over at Roland High School. And for the first time last week, Roland High School played a night home game at home. And Phil, how did the school go about raising the money? It's kind of an unusual story. Well, first of all, what makes this such a unique situation is another money was raised through taxpayers, or taxpayers didn't have any money to do with the saving at all. Most of it was raised privately and through our mostly for our bingo um, game that we have every Monday. So in other words, your booster club members get together and play a little bingo. It was a community effort. I mean, we had three uh, 10,000 donations from anonymous donors. Uh, we have a booster club. Uh, we have a stadium committee club who's also been very instrumental. All right. Thanks a lot, Phil. All right. Thank you, Mike. All right, Chris, back upstairs. All right. Roland has possession. The ball at that 29-yard line, but kind of a strange play, Jimmy, just well, happened. West Camina tried to punt, and the Roland rush took the blocker into the punt so that they punted right into the blocker. All right, pass is complete on the far side, and this one goes to Jeff Gonzalez, and he's all the way down inside the 20-yard line to the 19 on a pass from Hanson. Jeff so, Gonzalez runs some great routes. I'm, I'm really impressed. He doesn't just go out there and run them. He squares them off. He breaks them off. You'll see on the replay, he runs this pattern the way it's diagrammed. He goes out there. It gives it everything he has and then comes back around and picks up an extra oh, five, six, seven yards. Finally brought down by Pat Rich on the tackle on that defensive unit. All right, 450 remaining. In this third period, Hansen with a pass intended out in the flat. That is going to be incomplete for Mike Villagran, number 32, on Roland. What, what's impressive about the game, besides the play of these two teams, was those offset, that offsetting penalty we had just a little bit ago. That was only the second time a flag's been thrown all day, and one of them was holding on a PAT. See that West Covina 7-0 record during this 1985 season, and also the inside of our truck. See Brian Lockwood, our director? Right there in the center with the Channel 56 jacket on. When do we get jackets, Chris? When, when was that? Uh... <laughs> I think they're working on it. Isn't that what they usually That's say? Right down now. to the 15-yard line. As so, soon as they find an empty circus tent, they can cut down. <laughs> Russell Goo was the ball carrier. Well, we got an injured throwing player out there. And a timeout is going to be called on the field. And with a break in the action, 4.29 remaining in the third period, 21 to nothing. Roland leading West Covina, and we'll come back. And it was shaken up, and Roland doesn't want to have to lose him for too long. He's already gained 100 yards on the ground. Pass over the middle, and this one is complete. They're going to go into the end zone. This one's going to be for a touchdown. Hansen comes up with another touchdown pass. This one goes to Phil Brom, 6'2", 183-pounder, and he's only a junior. Phil Brom takes it into the end zone, touchdown. The well, minute he got that ball, he knew where he wanted to be with it, didn't he? Sure did. Phil Brom checked into the ball game, took a pass from Dave Hansen. As they go for the PAT, they're over working on Goo on the sidelines, and you're right, Chris, they have to have him back. Even with a four-touchdown lead, you better get him back. Hang and on a second. This is turning into a route as that extra point is kicked through the uprights, and it is good by Aguas, but a holding penalty is going to be called against Roland again. They had one back in the first half. And they're going to probably have to do this one all over again. Remember, Aguas had to kick an extra point from about 40 yards out back in the first half. 
the officials are talking things over and they're going to try it again Well, I guess they're not going to try it again. And the score will stand at 27 to nothing with Roland leading West Camina with four minutes and 19 seconds remaining. All right, the top teams by conference. The Big Five, Long Beach Poly in the Central Conference, Newport Harbor. The Inland Conference, Valley Christian. And in the Southern Mission, Viejo. The Northwestern is Canyon Country. And Desert Mountain Conference, Lusinger and Eastern is Norco. Southeastern, Charter Oak, 8-0 going into action this weekend. In the eight-man, Faith Baptist, and in the Coastal Conference, it's sure. 27 to nothing. Another onside kick by Roland. It's covered by West Covina at the 45-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for West Covina, who had their problems tonight, and their hands full with this rolling ball club. The Raiders came out to play tonight. And as we alluded to earlier, Harry Robinson said that the guys needed a victory tonight after two losses and a tie out of eight ball games if they were going to get into the playoffs. So maybe a little bit more incentive tonight than a ball club like West Covina, who's 7-0 coming into the contest. Four minutes and five seconds remaining here in this third quarter. And West Covina with Vince Aguilar at quarterback. Wants to put it in the air. Throws it downfield. It is incomplete pass intended for Tootie Gill. And back there defending was Tony Saran. But it's incomplete. It'll be second and ten from that point. Look, well, Chris, we got a special guest in the booth. If they turn on the, the mic, we're going to talk to Henry Alfaro. And everybody in Southern California knows who that newsman is. And you're a West Covino fan, Henry. Well, I've been coming here for over 20 years. And, uh, my son was only about two years I'm old. Working. I started coaching Pop. What, that says not working. Ah, there it is. Go ahead. Now it's working. Okay, actually, uh, I've been coming here for over 20 years. I started coming here. I used to coach Pop Warner in the area, and so I used to come to see my boys play. My son played here football back in 1975. And uh, so, um, obviously, I am not only a parent, but a faithful uh, West Covina Spartan fan. Well, how's a, a Henry Alfaro? You're, you're busy. You've got a lot of new stuff to do. How do you find time to come out and see these games? Well, I enjoy the football, especially at the high school level. And uh, my son helps out in the coaching staff, by the way. And they've been doing very well this year. And I find it a good way of relaxing it, uh, beat staying home and watching television. How's this West Covina team compare with 75 when they went to the semifinals? Well, I'll tell you, this team uh, has a lot more speed. And it has uh, more size. They're not as deep as maybe 1975, but uh, quite honestly, uh, the 75 team paid with, played with a lot of emotion, a lot of emotion, and uh, that seems to lag here, at, at least at uh, my own personal opinion. Well, before I let you go, Henry, I have to ask you, now you've watched West Covina several times this year, and throw out tonight's game, 28 nothing or 27 nothing, losing a roll, and how far do you think they can go in the playoffs? Well, it's uh, difficult to say. I think that uh, on a... On they should go a long ways. I certainly hope so. Um, they don't have a lot of depth, as you can see by the, the squad size. And they have some outstanding individuals. But it's a, a real team effort here. It has to take for them to go a long ways. They have some excellent runners, and they have some good, uh, pretty decent pass receivers. So uh, the defense, though, that's, that's the critical part. I was going to let you go, but watch this replay. The referee calls it incomplete. With your I unbiased saw, news view, what do you think it is? No, that was a catch. I saw it from up here. <laughs> that's it. I was completely Vince. unbiased. The man it knows news, and you see on the replay, he's right. It Vince Aguilar to Tootie Gill. It is a catch. It's right there. Well, it's he incomplete. Gets his under it. Well, on the replay, that's questionable. <laughs> but if you uh, ask an unbiased parent and West Covina fan, that was a catch. What more could you ask? Henry, I that's appreciate right. you dropping by. It's very kind of you, and maybe we will see you in the playoffs. I certainly hope so. You know, by the way, this is really outstanding that your station come out and, and do something like this. All too often, they concentrate on the colleges and the pros, but it's right here that the real enthusiasm, the real game of football is played. And I have to congratulate all of you. Well, I appreciate that, Henry. And as we both know, you meet a better class of athlete here at the high school. That's right. I'm going to go home and watch this for sure. Thanks a lot, Henry. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Henry Alfaro from KBC-TV, Channel 7 in Los Angeles, stopping by to say hello to us.
lived out here in the San Gabriel Valley. See, there's some of us, Jim, that live out here in the San Gabriel Valley. Well, from what I've seen out here, I like it. There's it some is nice a great people area. out here. It really is a great area. Oh, the old oh, Dixie the old give and go and give it to Leland Adams, and he's going to take it in for a touchdown. They complete the pass to Mike Caldwell, and Caldwell pitches it back to Leland Adams, and Adams takes it in for a TD. They, both teams, as you see, are, are pulling everything out of the playbook. This is no accident. This is designed. This is worked on. Catch the pass, you get tackled, you throw it to Leland Adams. Even if there were people in front of Adams, it would have been a touchdown. But it was clear sailing. And he waves bye-bye as he goes in for West Covina's first touchdown of the night. Leland Great Adams, 5'9", 165-pound senior. He can do it all for West Covina, and they finally get on the scoreboard. Glenn Norris in to attempt the extra point. And he kicks this one through the uprights with 235 remaining here in the third period. 27-7, Roland leading West Covina. And there's still time, Chris. You can see those happy cheerleaders from West Covina. Now they have something to cheer about. Let's watch it again. Oh, I can watch this a hundred times. This is a great play. Vince Aguilar to Mike Caldwell. So our spotter, John Charlton, who has played this game. And right back to <laughs> Leland Adams. Me it's a hook and ladder. I love those terms. They don't mean anything, but you got to love them. That's a great play, Chris. Visitors tonight, Roland, the home ball club is West Covina. And there you see how much time is left in the third quarter. West Covina will now kick off, and Glenn Norris, last time he kicked off, it was an onsider. And let's see what happens this time. Russell Goo is not back deep. They're going to try for another onsider. And it'll go to the far side. But this one is going to be down by Roland at that 49-yard line. So good coverage by the kickoff return team by Roland. And the man that came up with the football was Manny Orozco. All right, there's the girls' volleyball. Conference leaders. Big Five, Maricosta, 4A, Marlboro, 3A, Rim of the World, ignored them. Southern Cal Christian, formerly Melody Lance. Sunny Hills and water polo. Sunny Hills, I cannot remember the last time that the Lancers did not win the league in water polo. All right, first and 10 for Roland. And all the way down to about that 46-yard line. Choi is a tough person to bring he down. He really is. Tom Choi, like we said, 6-foot, 197-pound senior. And a tough one to bring down. John Bastion, Benson actually in on that last hit. There's the boys' cross-country leaders. 4A Simi Valley, 3A Saugus, Loyola, and then Sherman Indian in the 1A. Uh, Ken wouldn't, wouldn't, never forgive me if I didn't mention Sherman Indian. Ken, there you go, I mentioned them. Well, you snuck it in there, right? <laughs> Pitch into the backfield. Uh, just good defense, but there's a flag down. Penalty flag back at the midfield stripe on that quick little toss to Curtis Lloyd. And if, if, if Let's watch it again. Everybody's waiting for him. And Heredia comes up There's and makes a nice stop. Has to be an illegal block. That's what they're going to march off. So it's going to go against Rowan. 144. Remaining here in this third quarter, 27-7. Roland leading West Covina. There's the tennis. Palos Verde, Styles Milks, La Quinta, and Diamond Bar. Is there anything Diamond Bar doesn't win in? They have been hot, haven't they, the last few years? The Brahmas. All right, it'll be second and 25. The ball at that 34-yard line of Roland, and they give this one to Tom Choi. And Choi gets up near the 40 and is upended at that point by West Covina. Chris, Roland's not nearly the same team offensively without Russell Goo. Boy, Russell Goo really makes him go. And he was shaken up about two series ago down at the 10-yard line of West Covina and hasn't come back as of yet. Leland Adams is shaken up, and now he's going to come out of the ball game. He'd been playing a defensive back position for West Covina. So two of the top rushers not, and running backs have not, been shaken up. Yeah, not two of. You can throw out of. He two best 
Don't forget, special Thursday night edition. Our first of two next week, Modern Day and Servite. Thursday night on our Channel 56 game of the week. And then on Friday night, Riverside Poly and Fontana. So keep it here for all your favorite sports action. Dave Hansen has the ball batted down. Joe Chadbourne got his hand on the ball. And, and there's a reason he got his hand on Chris. He's 6'9", 250, and you try throwing over that. Would you call him a prospect? A uh, suspect, anyway. He's number 77, and when he puts his paws in the air, it's like trying to throw over a grizzly. Hansen looking at the big redwood, and there it goes. Tipped. All right, Leland Adams back deep on the punt by Mike Villagran as he stands in punt formation at his 28-yard line. Kicks an end over end one towards Mike Heredia, and it's going to go out of bounds. Doesn't even come close to Heredia at about the 30-yard line. Let's see where they spot that ball. Right at the 30-yard line, first and 10 for West Covina with 38 seconds remaining here in this third period. Roland leading 27-7 over the Spartans of West Covina. You know, with Goo out, Chris, how, that was the top uh, nominee for the in and out player of the game. That's, we're going to have to rethink now. Well, I'll tell you, Hansen has had a pretty good ball game, too, at oh. quarterback. Let's watch it one more time, this last West Covina touchdown. Uh, All right, let's go back to the game because right now it's first and ten for West Covina. And here we are back to the action, dropping back Aguilar, and he's going to be sacked. Back at the 18-yard line. Greg Higuera. All right, here's the West Covina touchdown. The completed pass to Mike Colwell. Then he pitches the ball back to Leland Adams, and he is gone. And that propelled Adams not only back into our in-and-out derby, but here he comes back in the game after being shaken up on defense. Got to have him in there. Maybe just a slight little ankle twist, but he's back in. 30 seconds and counting remaining here in the third period. Still time for West Covina to do it. After that sack, it's second down and 20 as Aguilar steps up to the ball. To go on top and has to run out of the pocket. Throws it on the run as he's being tackled. Incomplete intended for Dietz Mitchell at the 25-yard line. But a heavy pass rush put on the quarterback, Vince Aguilar. Well, Greg Higuera was the man who put that heavy pass rush on him. Roland is trying to play good defense and keep him out. And Aguero was the one who sacked him on the previous play. So he's beating somebody up there. He's looking for number two and almost got it. 13 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Actually, on some stats, you call that a force, Chris. He forced the pass before it should go. That goes in your stat sheet. Some defensive uh, units like to see a lot of those, too. That means you're hurrying that quarterback back there to get rid of the ball. Third down and 20, Aguilar, over the middle, it is complete, Mike Caldwell, and he is upended, oh, about five yards short, I believe, of the first down marker, make it three. They'll spot the ball at the 36-yard line and the end of the third quarter, with Roland leading West Covina 27-7, we'll be right back. Right, beginning of this fourth and final period with Roland leading 27 to 7 over West Covina and West Covina has it fourth down and three so a big play at that 37 yard line now the good news for Roland is that Goo is up running on the sidelines the bad news is they're working on Corey Blake now Mike Colwell wide to the far side to the near side is Tootie Gill 20-point deficit. West Covina is trying to make it up here in this fourth period. Aguilar. Oh, what and a he hit. fumbles the ball as he's hit on a sack. Frank Gillis. And the officials say Roland has recovered it. Another turnover. And Roland's taking advantage of everyone tonight. I don't know if that can go as a turnover on fourth down. It, 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 you know, is, is it a fumble? Is it a dead ball? I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Either way, it's Roland's ball. Frank One thing Gillis. for sure. It is a fumble. And thanks to Frank Gillis, that play was aborted. The ball at that 29-yard line, and Roland will have it first and 10. Every time Roland's needed a good defensive play tonight, it's gotten it. Dave Hansen is 7 of 10 for 75 yards. The quarterback rolls out. Well, he's got plenty of time. Now he starts to run it. And he goes out of bounds at the 26. And look who's all alone on our side of the field. 
Russell Goo. He's back in the game. Good to Good see him for back. Aguilar tonight for West Covina is 12 for 22 for 137. Here's the Raiders in college. John Bell at Cal State Fullerton. Troy Reed at San Diego State. Mike Mortimer at Boise State. And Al Martin signed with the Atlanta Braves. I suppose that's good news. I've seen Atlanta play. I don't know. Well, maybe not this year. Now, Cox will make a difference. Bobby Cox. You better believe it. How about the new manager, Chuck Tanner? Second down and six and an inside handoff to Tom Choi. He's down near that 20-yard line. Now Bobby Cox will not allow the owner to interfere with the play this year, and that's you know, been the problem with the Atlanta really Braves. You know what's really funny is Bobby Cox, if you remember, was a manager of the Atlanta Braves and was fired before he got the Toronto Blue Jay job. And his quote was, look how smart I got. <laughs> <laughs> now he's the GM. Yeah. Chuck Tanner came over from the Pirates. <laughs> Ted Turner's amazed at how smart I got in just a couple of years. Third down and two for Rollins. And they're at the West Covina 20-yard line. 10.53 remaining in the fourth period. Tom Choi, big hole. Down to the 10. Now, Tom Oliveris and center Jim Galloway double teamed their man. That's what popped that hole open. And I mean, they buried him. Eric Kent was the man that made the tackle on Tom Choi. But the big guy, 6-foot, 195-pounder, he takes it all the way down to the 10-yard line of West Covina. You know, we don't give the in-and-out award to linemen. That would be too easy to, to get somebody that actually makes a difference in the game. But Tom Oliveris, the left guard, has played very well tonight. Give it to Tom Choi. Big hole again. He goes in for touchdown. And now both Tom Choi and Russell Goo have 100-yard games. For Goo, 100. And Choi just picked up his 108th yard. Very impressive when you have two running backs hit 100 yards. There you see center Jim Galloway is leading it, pushing out the linebacker. That's created open. And Choi breaks the tackle and gets in the end zone. Boy, he is a hard runner at Tom Choi. If I told you at the start of the game, Chris, that this would be 34-7 in the fourth quarter, you'd think I was talking West Covina, wouldn't you? Well, I would also think you might be crazy. <laughs> well, that's been debatable, too. The <laughs> no, kick is up. It's proved. <laughs> The kick is up by Mario Agua, but a penalty flag comes down on the field again. As West Covina was offside, so what they'll do is we'll count this kick and, and march it up on the kickoff. Still conferring with the co-captains down on the field. You're pretty confident about that flag, huh? Well, I'm confident that the referee signaled offsides and pointed to West Covina. Well, I think he missed it, though, see? So what they're going to do is they're going to try it again, offside. So you're right, charged against West Covina. But Aguas missed the kick, so he'll get a second chance. It's right now 33-7. to Roland leading West Covina with 10.28 remaining in the game. You know, the, the clue was last week when Roland tied Los Altos. That was the clue, Chris. And Agua gets this one through. And with 10-28 remaining in the game, it's a 34-7 ball game. And it's a rout of West Covina by Roland so far. And time is starting to run out for the Spartans. We'll come back. If Shorty strikes out Dimwitz, Nash... Okay, Mike Heredia picks the kickoff up at the 10-yard line. Comes back and is going to be swarmed over at about the 15 for West Covina. And Roland must feel good about that 34-7 lead because they kicked it that time. They really do. You know, an outstanding night for all three of the backs, Jim, when you look at that backfield for Roland. Dave Hansen tonight, 7 for 10, 75 yards, three touchdown passes. Tom Choi, 108 yards rushing. Russell Gu, 100 yards rushing. All right, smart guy, which one do you pick for the In-N-Out Award? Uh, you know, we were talking about it earlier. Right now, it looks like a three-way tie. They're never going to saw a plaque in the thirds. <laughs> well. It's easy to cut a hamburger in thirds. Yeah, especially an animal double-double. Mm -hmm. My favorite. All right, pitch. Back to Leland Adams. He's got some running room and comes up across the 25, upended at the 27-yard line. Leland Adams, and he's hit by Corey Blake. Ad Adams, is, Adams is going for 100 yards of his own. Hey, we got a shot of some guys that have been helping us pull cable up and down the sideline all night, and we appreciate it. Brian Lockwood, Brian Lockwood should buy those kids some in-and-out hamburgers. I mean, he's got money. He drives a Porsche. He should, he should buy those kids some hamburgers. And there's our truck right along the sideline, our Channel 56 truck. Remote truck on location here at Byberg Field. Aguilar All throwing the, the bomb. Tootie Gale 
and he might go all the way. Tootie Gill, touchdown pass from Vince Aguilar. Oh, and that was the bomb. No, 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 that wasn't a bomb. Bombs go off. That thing just went on and on and on. I tell you what, he pulled the pin on that oh, one, ready for it to explode. Let's watch it again, Jim. That Beautiful thing, pass by Aguilar. That thing almost burned up on re-entry. He just outruns his man. A great catch. Of course, he was open on that. 72-yard touchdown pass from Vince Aguilar to Tootie Gill. And with 9.28 remaining in the game, it's 34 to 13. You should tell Brian Lockwood in the truck to unhook the generator and go use it on the scoreboard because we're going to need it to power that thing before it's over. Wild ball game here in West Covina as Glenn Norris kicks this one through and into the night. That makes it 34 to 14. Roland leading West Covina with 9.28 remaining in this fourth period. Wow, what a ball game tonight. Give those West Covina fans something to cheer about here tonight. Well, not only gives the West Covina fans something to cheer about, it gives your Mission Viejos, El Medina, all those people down there who may be seeing these sort of folks in the playoffs. These are two good teams. Better believe it. Let's watch it again. Aguilar just unloads it, and he puts it in the air and long enough that Tootie Gill can just run underneath it. Perfect. Didn't even have to break stride to catch it. That's didn't. a perfect pass. Those look so pretty when they're completed. Tootie Gill. Onside kick here, Chris. What do you think? Well, sure looks like it. There's Tootie Gill on the sideline. Number 24 on West Covina. 5'10", 170-pound senior. A happy man. 72-yard touchdown pass reception. You better be tough with the name of Tootie, huh? <laughs> Ball is recovered by Manny Orozco. You got that right. Uh, yeah. And especially out in this area in the San Gabriel Valley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here when you go to school, they, then they frisk you for a gun. If you don't have one, they give you one. No, that's not true. It's a nice place out here. Of course, I grew up out here. Well, okay, so I'm right. Uh, I grew up in Baldwin Park. <laughs> I live in Covina now. Proof positive of my supposition. Dim DeSicchio, De actually DeCiccio, one of our cameramen, he grew up here too. Yeah, so we've got, thug. we've got some San Gabriel Valley representation. Handoff. This goes to Eric Laskowski. Uh, to get serious, because the people here have treated us very well. This I'll tell you what. Very hospitable out here. I enjoy it. There's Jim right there. Now, was I right? Or, is that a thug or not? Look at that. He stole that camera. That's not our camera. That belonged to Channel 50. At there one you time, see huh? it. We're right behind him, too, up in the booth. Be behind him is the place to be, too, I might add. Yeah, we're right behind him. All right, second down and seven. That's Jim, Jim Atchison and quarterbacking now, so they must have a good feel about this, the rolling folks. Down to the 44-yard line, and why not? Give some of the extra guys a chance. Eric Lukowski, the ball carrier, and he is upended by Pat Rich on West Covina. A lot of new names in there. 8-19 remaining in this game. 34-14, rolling in control offensively, and they are leading in the score. Time ticks away. We're down eight minutes. Jim Atchison calling signals with a pitch. Trying to turn it around the far side, and they go all the way down to the 35-yard line. Ron York, the running back. Here's some of the West Covina kids in college. Derek Tittnell over at UCLA. Benny Carrillo at Washington State. Steve Meyer went here. The That's old right. Seahawk, and Tom Bernanski. Yeah, I tell you, Bruno is a tough kid. And, uh, Bruno, anything I said about West Covina, <laughs> just forgive me. Okay? Told you, you better watch that. You never know who you're talking about I, up here in the San Gabriel Valley. When Bruno was in high school, I saw him hit the longest home run I've ever seen a high Jim school Jim Atchison, hit. pass intended, downfield incomplete. Kevin Williams was the intended receiver, number 26. And who did he hit that home run off of? Mike Whip who was at Sir right at the time. Very interesting, That's too, right. in the playoffs. I remember that. Let's go down to Mike Anderson on the field. Michael? Thanks, Chris. I have Anthony Delavar, the girls' volleyball coach here. And today's sort of been like Black Friday for West Covina. The, the football team's losing. And coach, you guys lost today in the first round of the playoffs. But you had to be happy. It's the first time in the school's history that your team's made the playoffs. Yeah, it is the first time. But uh, I was really happy today with the game. They've really played tough against La Habra. Tough team. And... Uh, I can just be proud of them. That's all, you know, first time for them. And uh, we won our first round, but, you know, it, it was tough. We were, the La Habra seeded six, you know, so we were the underdogs today. And 
we played really well. I, I can't. I am satisfied. You guys finished 11 and 4 on the season. Where were you guys picked when the year started? When we started, we were probably supposed to be fourth place in our league. The rest of the coaches talking it up because usually West Covina is at the bottom of the pile. But uh, this year we surprised a lot of teams and uh, they just couldn't believe it. And that was one of our goals to get up there and we did it. Well, at least you made the playoffs. Thanks for spending a few moments with us. All right, thanks a lot. All right, Chris, back. Here it comes, the Winston. 14, Roland leading West Covina with 5.06 remaining as we rejoin the action back here at Thyberg Field in West Covina, California. You know, a special night Thursday edition. In fact, it's the beginning of a doubleheader CIF week right here on Channel 56. Modern Day and Servite will go at it. And, of course, we'll have that broadcast back for you at 9 p.m. on Thursday night, Friday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Then on Friday night, Riverside Poly and Fontana, Inland Empire rivals, and that should be a dandy matchup. We'll have that Friday, and then on Saturday, Friday at 10 p.m., Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Pass down the center of the field for the tight end, Dietz Mitchell, is incomplete. Number 15, 5'11", 187-pound senior. Back there defending on him, Greg Higuera. There you see him running stride for stride with him, number 83. And our time left in the game and the score. Roland visiting West Covina, Thyberg Field here tonight in Sierra League action. West Covina coming into the ball game 7-0. And, oh. and for Roland, 5-2-1. I want to say many thanks to head coach right here at West Covina High, Tim Bradshaw, for all of his help past week. Of course, he's been here for 16 years, one of the most stable guys in the area. Pass almost intercepted at that 24-yard line, almost picked off by Juan Castro. And, and you saw Castro go over the man, but it's not interference. Why? Because the ball was tipped at the line, and the minute that happened, you can beat, beat up anybody. Anything goes. Open season. The Aguilar trying to get this ball off, and Castro almost came up with it. You know, by the same token, Harry Robinson and his group, many thanks to them for all their help over at Roland. There you see the Sierra League standings. Well, that's going to knot things up pretty good because Roland's going to be 2-1. and one. West Camilla drops a 3-1. He's got four teams going for three playoff spots. Hunting situation now. West Covina gets this one away and kind of angles it. Mike Colwell out of bounds at about that 45-yard line of West Covina. Should be first and 10 for Roland at the 45 of West Co. We'll come back in a moment. 34 to 14. Roland leading by 20 over West Covina. It's remaining here in this fourth period. And 34 to 14 is our score. Roland leading West Covina. Our executive producer tonight is Bob Elder, sports director from Channel 56. Produced by Ken, Ken Carey, our director, Brian Lockwood, back in the truck. Good job, Brian. Associate producers, Mike Anderson, Jim Raffalo, Kurt Lowe. Production assistants, Dean Dowdy, Ken Dupius, and Dave Judy. Our engineer on location, Don Engelhardt. He'll fix just about anything that you need corrected. I, I had heard that earlier. Kevin Little on replays tonight. Cameras Darren Pattison, Manny Cajillas, John Faulkner, Jim DeCiccio, floor director Bob Hassenjager, audio Chris Little and graphics, Glenn Langdon. Good job tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Our statistician, another super job on location, John Charlton here at West Covina, spotter Bill Lapeer. And what a great thrill to have the Midwest division manager, Bob Lang, from the in and out right here with us. West Covina playing for pride right now, Chris. They want to take well, this Well, they're that kind score. of a ball club. Sure. They never say die. Tootie Gill on that receiving end of a Vince Aguilar pass with 39 seconds remaining. Tootie Gill had a touchdown earlier on a nice play. Never broke stride. Was it a 74-yard touchdown, was it? Sure did. 72 yards, as a matter of fact. In the air for Vince Aguilar. 32 seconds. West Covina threatening to score with that ball on the two-yard line. And a pitch goes back to Leland Adams, and he's not going to get this one in the end zone. 23 seconds remaining. And a timeout is going to be called by the head coach, Tim Branshaw. Well, Roland figured, well, you might score a touchdown, but Leland Adams isn't going to do it. 18 seconds remaining here in the contest. 34 to 14 is our score. West Covina and Aguilar drops back, looks into the end zone, looking for a receiver, throws it to Tootie Gill, touchdown for West Covina. 
and they get on the scoreboard with seven seconds now remaining in the contest. All right, not too much time left. In fact, the clock has just run out. Four seconds were on the clock when we came back up. And that is the ball game with our final score, 34 to 20. Roland defeating West Covina in Sierra League action. And for Roland now, their record is six and two and one. They go two and one in league play. For West Covina, they are now seven and one. And their potential of an undefeated season goes down the drain. We'll come back in a moment. In and out, quality you can taste, that's what a hamburger's all about. You're looking at a car that costs $39.90. You're looking at a Yugo. Orange County.